Can't see there. Look. Oh, cool. That's his life. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> so I'm Ciris Raquel Rivas Verdejo. I'm Caroline Morris. And I'm. Who the hell am I now? <laughs> I wouldn't know. You keep so many names you have. I only have four names. Anyway. Uh, right, I'm Peter, normally. No, I'm not. Right. Oh, so I'm, I'm saying hi to everyone from Savannah, Georgia, and Caroline and Peter. You're in right outside of Glasgow, right? Yep, about north yeah. of Glasgow, yes. In we the are. Burbs. In Bear's Den. In the Bear's Den. Awesome, awesome. That's in Scotland for those not in the know. I did not know that before meeting <laughs> Caroline and Peter. Um, and we wanted to check in with you all about your relationships. Like, how are your relationships doing? <laughs> and uh, as we're streaming, I'm also going to check the comments as well. So um, go ahead and post, say hi, let us know where you are in the world. And um, how are your relationships going? And as we're waiting for your comments, we'll also kind of give you some updates on what's been going on with, with our relationships this week, this month, this year, this life. <laughs> yeah, if you can remember that far back. <laughs> no, that's a valid point. I don't remember this morning very much. So let's, let's see what, what shows up. <laughs> you don't want to remember this morning? Um, not earlier, no. I definitely don't want to remember this morning earlier. Not before breakfast, no. No, it's a roller coaster for us. So much is shifting, I think. And although... <coughs> it wasn't our fault. It <laughs> wasn't our fault, he says. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, yeah, you know, I think it definitely helps. For us, it helps because we can, we both have, we're both willing to play energetically as well as in the kind of day-to-day -day that we might have, I would say was our norm maybe in the past with relationships. And I know when to shut up. Really? My God, not really, you don't. Knowing when to shut up has been one of the biggest challenges for me. And I'm still learning that. Uh, I think a lot of us, especially as women, we think we need to talk things to death or we, that that's the way to like resolve a lot of conflict or if we talk it out, it'll be better. And the power of silences is so huge. Um, and it's also then it helped me with my business to not talk as much as well. So when we learn this in one area of your life, you can apply it to the other. And for both is just huge. So how did you guys use that this morning to get from, I don't even want to talk about whatever to where you guys actually can sit next to each other and laugh and be on Facebook <laughs> I think, You know, I think part of it, I, I agree with you. I think women do on the whole, and maybe that's the thing, do talk. And I get that sometimes I'm the mouthpiece for Peter as well as myself. And I also get that that's the way I dissipate the energy. I kind of, he'll let me chunter on and then he'll say his bit, or he won't, or he'll wonder what the is she on about? <laughs> what's that about and it's like <coughs> put the kettle on well yeah you're, you usually look to food and when i am really upset i don't want to eat i'm not into food and stuff that's one of the ways i relate and he kind of gets the warning signal that she's not into i'm food. not hungry <laughs> okay as so soon as you say i'm not hungry then he knows okay something's yeah. about to hit the fan and we're gonna have to like go ahead and process some things, be it energetically, verbally, or both, um, hmm. and then go from yeah. there. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like this morning, I ended up um, having to have some space of my own. I just went into the other room and Peter was doing breakfast and things. And I had actually said, I didn't want breakfast because I really wasn't in the space. But when he called and he'd made it all, which was lovely and as a gift, it was kind of that's where we re-met, if you like. And mm. it kind of the past is the past. Maybe some of those well, conversations on over pause, us. but maybe they're not. And some of them are looking at our eyes. You don't have a pause button, darling. Really? Well, I learned that from Cyrus. Yes. There is no pause. 
There's just a long length of time in it. Remember that conversation? No. It's like it's not the same conversation. It's a different one at a different level. Is it? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> that was sat up. So, yes, we're here. We're not forcing it. We're not faking it here. We've had a bit of a, I would say, a stramash mm. um, this morning. You're um, always learnt, teaching me new words. What is stramash? Uh, uh, um, what would you say? What would you say? A stramash is kind of a... Oh. It's, a, it's a gentle disagreement. Okay, not so gentle, but it doesn't was... sound gentle. And stramash, I'm like mash does not sound like it's a gentle <laughs> well, it thing. A, yeah, it's yeah. a bit stramash this morning yeah. and early hours, and it's a little vortex of energy that doesn't know where it's going. And it goes mm. a bit explosive at times, and then it's sort of like that ping pong, but it's more like the smash and tennis, like take that. And okay, take... <laughs> and, and then. then... You let it out and then it goes away. It now, goes I mean, one of the things I love about you all is that you get it all out. You don't let it bottle up and then you don't hold it. Don't and let me know if this is correct, incorrect, but it seems like you also don't keep referring to it and holding it against each other. Like that, whatever was said in these like blow ups, it's like, all right, we got it all out. It's gone, and now who are we together, and who are we individually, and moving forward? Yeah, but that, I'd say, in all honesty, that process can take from two seconds to two weeks. Yeah, just depends. You know? Yeah, I mean, we're lucky that uh, I've still got another place I can go. I mean, I go up to Perth. I've, I've worked up there for long enough. I've got band practice up there, so we get a good, healthy bit of time for our, ourselves on our own um, and that has certainly helped the relationship because it was, it was a, it was a big cooling off period especially with all the um, nonsense that's my point of view about this virus and, and, and people being wound up and being uptight about uh, genuine concerns um, you know we can just say you know I'm off or yeah. Carly so what would you me, recommend yeah. to somebody who doesn't have that option who is in their home all the time it can't leave you know it doesn't have another home or another place to go or maybe they can't they they do have another home but they are restricted in travel right now yeah, yeah, given yeah. their country's restrictions their policies and laws um because that's definitely a, a factor for my relationship with my mom we share a house together and it's a very big house which helps immensely but even sometimes you know the five bedrooms isn't big enough <laughs> And, and yet, and, and so I can't, I absolutely get that that's a privilege and that not everyone has that space. There's people that are, have 10 people in like one or two rooms. And then how do you navigate all this crunchiness, this tension that can come guess, up in guess the smaller the, spaces? The, the instant answer to that is to be able to um, look inward to yourself. Like a like a meditation thing, like a you know just just calm everything down and chill and have whatever it is that your your body's asking for its desire, whether it's to maybe go fishing. If it's a guy that wants to go go fishing, go to the beach. I mean, we we went to the beach the other day, and uh, yeah. you know it was a bit it was a little bit of a drive for us here, um, but you know nothing of what happens in the states. Um, an hour or something and the environment changed completely we sat in the car we had a little picnic with us we chilled out we had uh, we'd had had quite a, an energetic um, confluence I guess um, up to that point and Carly knew that it required a break mm -hmm. so um, we did we went up to Kirkcaldy little place in Fife onto the beach and had Ladyship decided to start playing a mermaid's paddling in the sea, and that was cool. And, and that was I, and there was no video and there was no photos of Caroline being a mermaid in the sea. All those photos, <laughs> the, the, there are I photos, see that. <laughs> oh, she's hiding them. I think one of the things, too, is that, and I do consider myself incredibly lucky in that Peter will. We, I can talk to him and we've come to a point in our relationship and we, we can have conversations that might have been awkward 
in the time we've been, you know, in the past that aren't really now. And part of that is that we don't go into the personal on the whole. Most times no, we well, don't. We, both, we really don't. I mean, we've both had previous relationships, uh, varying degrees. I've had, I've been married twice. Second time was just to make sure I got it wrong the first time. Um, <laughs> and, you know, all the life experiences of that have, have come up and, and my own culture and ideas um, have, have come into play. Um, I've learned one of the most important things, and regardless of who or what you are, what the situation is, is to, and I don't always do this, I have to admit, is keep the line of communication open. You don't have to like it. You don't have to enjoy it. It doesn't have to be comfortable, but get it out. Communicate with your partner regardless. And if it's the end, accept it. It's the end. Move on. But consult each other, talk to both about it. And if the general consensus is, you know, I love you, but not anymore. Or, you know, this isn't enough. Are you going to change it? Yes, no, or what? You know, are you going to move out? So be, I guess it's kind of mature in some some respects um, about it. And just say, you know, Caroline's horrified um, right now. No, I'm yeah, no, I'll, I'll go do it very easily. <laughs> Um, Here's the other thing, though, just to piggyback off what you said about the water and how you guys can go away when you don't get to change places, it seems like you change your environment in a different way. And so if, let's say someone can't go out of their home or they can't go and travel to the sea right now. You know, with my coaching clients, a lot of the things we have to think outside of the box. Here there are all these energies that are coming up. They don't have, you know, those, I have the sea right here as well that I can drive to at any time. And I love doing videos of that to contribute to the people that would like that energy and they just don't have that as an option right now. Um, but one of the things is like, okay, how can you bring the sea to you? How can you bring the forest to you? How can you bring that sense of calm and peace that you know is possible that you might've had some glimpses of, some peaks at into your space while all these other people might not be choosing that peace and calm. And even it's simple from like the water stuff to actually taking a moment and like doing ablutions and like washing your face yeah. in the sink and like washing it away and continuing to do that while really being connected with your breath over and over again. And then I'll guide people through that, through the sessions, and then I'll have them do that throughout their week and then report back and see how that, how that contributes to them. You know, kids love that as well. Like we, we'll make the sink a water table. You know, yeah. and so we're dipping the cups and we're making them and, and the pots and things, we're making them ships and boats and things so they don't have to be in the ocean to be playing like as if it was the ocean. Let's make it a storm and all that, you know. And so you can incorporate those things into your home life until you get the chance to be able to go to those places you would really like. Yeah. With the forest, you know, I we have a friend that just came over yesterday and actually I, I'm so glad this is handy. She makes these beautiful... Japanese style oh. trees for your home. Her name's Lady, and it's she's from Venezuela, um, and she makes these. And what's really nice, this, this is a coconut, and yeah. there's dirt inside. And then all you have to do is put it on a plate with water, and the water will be absorbed up mm -hmm. onto the top. Um, if any of you guys want her information, I'll connect you. But this is a great way to bring the forest into your home having those plants and things like that. And this is a very different energy. That's actually a money plant, which I love. So you're actually bringing in that abundance in a different way. Um, and and yeah, and the, the talking to it and the playing with it and the, even just the leaves, you just kind of stroke it and it's like, okay, yeah. And those moments that you, when you go back to your partner, when you go back to your kids, when you go back to your parents and family who might be in the same space with you, you have a little bit more peace and calm and a little bit more clarity on what's actually going to work, what they can hear and what they might need you to be like, okay. <laughs> like I literally go like this. Hmm. You know, my mom does that too. She's really good. She'll just be like, I want to say something, but, and so she's communicating to me that she wants to say something, but she's not going to. And I'm like, and I just say like, thank you. Thank you. Just thank yeah. you. You don't have to say anything right now. I don't need you to say anything. It's been great. And, you know, she knew, you know, I've, I've been dating since I was like 12 years old. So it's been, do the math. I mean, like, what is that? Over 20 years, right? Of dating. 
And with that, there's all these experiences, not just with dating, with relationships, but also with breakups. And so, and I had a breakup, as you all know, in the last week or two, I think it's been a week or two now, <laughs> I have no sense of time. And yet we are still able to have a mutual respect for each other. We're still able to have, I'm able to have, I can't speak for him, I'll let him speak for himself, um, ease with it, you know, peace and calm with it, where it's like, okay, what's actually going to work with this, with us individually and together moving forward? So you were saying, Peter, earlier, sometimes you just have to have those hard talks. Like he was the one that brought it up. He's like, oh, I need to talk to you. We need to talk about this. This is what's going on. This is going on with me. This is what I think is about for our future. Da 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 da. And it was so honoring to have this really intense, uncomfortable conversation that most people would enjoy, would avoid, not enjoy, <laughs> avoid for longer. And the next thing you know, you're both miserable. Yeah, but that's the thing. I think we've kind of got to the point where we are willing to have it. I mean, we had, we've, I mean, it's, my sense is a lot of this is the awareness our bodies have about other bodies. It, regardless of how, I mean, in many ways, because we both work from home and I am highly creative as is Peter in his way. So I can go and be creative. That's a great, like you said, I can go and talk to the plants, talk to the cats, go and put my feet in the grass. All these things assist me. Just removing myself from, if Peter's in a, in a space himself that's not happy with something, sometimes I just take myself away until he's comfortable. You know, because we have stuff individually going on. And sometimes when you bring that together, it really doesn't help either of you. So it is also not only knowing when to be quiet, but knowing when actually this energy is not working for me. And again, I'm saying energy, but the, the environment is important. I think it's about bringing as much nurturing. And also, well, we all know that when you move your body, like even shaking off stuff, even just getting up, shaking it off, shaking a bit of the hips and, <laughs> back and whatever you're doing, it can make a huge difference. And find, find that, I mean, Peter's part of the thing, the way Peter gifts to me is he cooks. He loves mm. cooking and that's part of the gift he brings. And, like eating. and you like eating. Yes, that's very true. But the week before we had, we were out and I asked something because I was aware of a really hard crunchiness. And my way of bringing that up was to ask him to assist me with that. Not because I knew it was something to do with both of us, but I couldn't see it. And when you both look at something, as you said, with communication, you both have the chance to say, well, okay, what's possible for us here? How can I contribute to you? How can I, as you say, you honoring that relationship that you've just had with some this somebody and he put he in his in this case he spoke to you and said I, I'd like to talk about this with you and you could be that space and at the end of the day there's a cleanness about that and there's a space and there's a moving beyond it well and space was key because I gave him space to get to that clarity yeah instead of talking at him I knew something was off I knew he was going and processing a lot of different things I was like here go and have the space I don't need to process you I don't need to facilitate you I do that plenty with my relationships with my business I don't need to do it with my relationship so <laughs> that's part of what I'm choosing in relationships to not have them be work yeah. which is what I used to choose yeah. and in the sense of like work is in all this effort and like you know I'm trying to help someone and like they're not really willing to be aware no he's willing to have that awareness he's willing to do what it takes he's willing to process it himself and come back with that information and clarity as to what's going to work for him and so one of the things, given what, what I'm hearing from you all, and I think we have some comments here too. I see y'all. Ah, hi, Tanya. Accepting the end is crucial from May. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the other part of it with that is when you give someone space, you're giving you space. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a mutually beneficial gift and, and, and conscious action that you can take. The other part with this, and, you know, I'm, I'm addressing the, you're talking about the things that you can do. I'd love for those of you that are watching this, what have you been doing to have your relationships be nurtured, work for you, things that have helped you get from the crunchy, crispy moments to the like, ha, ah, or the laughter again and the joy again with your relationships. Go ahead and post that below, not just for us, because we're very curious, but also for anyone else that might be watching this, that might be wanting to get some ideas, you know. Caroline mentioned that 
it's great that sometimes you, when you're only you looking at it and it's not both of you looking at it, you sometimes miss things. And so when you're both willing to look at it together, that's great. And sometimes what the people that come to me for coaching is the people where they both recognize together, okay, we're both in agreement, things could be better or things could be easier or we used to have fun. I still like you, I think. So now what? And then you go and then you might need somebody else to point out some of the ideas to do some exercises with you, to, to invite you to consider some things that might get you out of your comfort zone that gets you from the comfort of misery to the uncomfortableness of a new type of joy. Because one of the things that I don't know if you all have been experiencing this is it's almost like there's two options. You either miserable single or you're miserable together. And I was like, what if that wasn't the only two options? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes one of the I think one of the big things for us was is like you know okay we're done we're done as we've been we've done this yes, we've, done this, we've done this we've done this we've been and he said well what else is possible and that's a whole new doorway and it's the willingness is our can we contribute to one another are we going to create greater together do we require space to you know a break indefinite a break for a moment what is required and what's going to work for both of you because if you don't put both of you in it then as you say you can't you don't see it all you don't see it all because we all have filters and different ways of looking at things and it's sometimes quite tricky when you're actually attached or you care for somebody regardless of that caring changing and about attachment and both Carla and I have said this to each other, although we're quite close, we ain't joined at the hip. We are in the, we, we are all individuals in our own right, in our own energy, in our own entity, in our own being, whatever way you want to look at it. And the coming together of two different energies can be absolutely fantastic, completely out of this world. And within that, there's going to be small eddies of turbulence, etc. until you can actually, well, maybe some larger than others. But yeah. So you, you, you're going to have that adjustment, not just an adjustment period that people talk about, but the energy of the adjustment, it's, it's not always a small thing. But to be present or have the presence and the, the uh, experience, and like you said earlier, think out of the box. If you can take yourself out and be the observer and see the energy that's going around, if you're an energetic, per energetic person, if you're not, just you know, have an awareness if you can. And this is where a lot of the energy work that we all do, we all have done access consciousness, etc., sound work, color work, all these things that raise your awareness assist you. And one of the best lessons I could ever say to anybody is be an observer. Take time out, step away from whatever it is and look at it. Look at it through different eyes if you can. You mentioned about children earlier. If people don't have the the opportunity to to go away someplace if they're stuck in their own house um you know take 10 minutes watch your kids play watch how they use their imaginations watch what i remember many many years ago um my my younger sister and i were in in my grand's house we lived there for 15 years but we were just kids and we had a reasonable amount of toys to play with. But Nyla and I found a feather out of a cushion or a pillow. And my grandmother was astounded at this because Nyla and I were uh, opposite each other. And for 15 minutes, instead of being at each other's throats, we were blowing this feather about the room. I love it. You can imagine that energy and, and be observe the, the innocence of the children and then take that for you and use that for, for um, to achieve your, your aim, your goal, or even just to achieve quietness. 
Well, and that's what I love about that. And I think that's a great place to end unless people have any comments or questions I'm looking, um, is that feather is exactly what we've been talking about with our communication too. It's like someone has to blow and then wait. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then it, and it, sometimes it's, it's just about both of you watching the feather floating while and then before someone else goes and says something or blows something to the other. And so this is, there's this play. There's also this ease and the, the enjoying those silences, those pauses there that I think would be, it's just a lovely metaphor for the ease that's possible with relationships. The, um, and it's also, you know, blowing around a feather back and forth isn't something that everyone can do, right? So it's also letting it fall. Okay, let's try it again. Let's get it up in the air again. Like, and that's what happens in relationships. And we have those moments where it's like, are we done? You know, it seems like everybody and their mother's been messaging me about possibly breaking up or they are breaking up or all this stuff this week. It's this week and last week. So it was really interesting that I actually did have a breakup while everyone was like debating about this. So I think that this is something that's resonating with a lot of people right now. And we, we're here, the three of us would love talking about this. We'd love to contribute to you and see what if we can give you some ideas about how you could you know, lean into what's possible with the relationships and the dating and, and all of that. Um, but thank you so much for the feather because I'm going to think about that now. Anytime that I'm wondering, is it time for me to go blow or for me to just watch it go? The, the movie Forrest Gump was filmed here in Savannah. Yeah. And, you know, they start off that with that feather at the, at the beginning of the end of the movie, the feather that blows around and all of that and like, and it goes into one of the chapels, the steeples here in Savannah. And that's, I think, a lot of life that we could just have this and we can see where the wind takes us, but not in a sense of like giving our power away to something else. It's like, we are the wind. Yeah. yeah. And it is about having that feather touch, mm-hmm. knowing when to, to pop, when to blow and when to, to just let the other person do yeah. the space. Just don't breathe in too quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> um, um, another comment here, serendipitous calmness by from May. Thank you, May. Thank you everyone for watching our video, for letting us uh, be a part of your Sunday or maybe Monday, depending on what part of the world you are, you're in right now. Um, and if you'd like these videos, go ahead and like this video, share it with your friends for those that are would like a check-in and, and like to get some of our ideas that we mentioned about relationships. Um, and yeah, and then we have some events coming up. If you want messages or information about those events, go ahead and message any of us individually. There is one that's a free call on November 11th for exuberantly you with sex dating and relationships and a bunch of other free comments content that we can send your way and so just let us know asking you shall receive and if you want us to talk more and delve deeper in anything that we've mentioned go ahead and also let us know that thank you so much caroline and peter for spending your time everybody else too thank you yep take it easy have fun bye everyone Bye. bye bye